we interrupt your program for Breaking News with Marissa and Sarah. Breaking News. Coming to you live from Studio 9, this is Marissa Barbosa and Sarah Black. We have breaking news. Violence has been breaking out in Kansas over the last couple of hours. The calls to police to be coming from groups of people called Border Ruffians who are stuffing the Kansas ballot boxes over the issues of slavery. Uh huh. This just in a warrant for the arrest of John Brown, a radical abolitionist, has been issued due to the fact that he violently murdered five pro slavery people. Sometime after 10 p.m., May 24, 1856, in Lawrence, Kansas, it is suspected he took the following five people James Doyle, William Doyle, Drury Doyle, Alan Wilkinson, and William Sherman from their cabins on Padawatomi Creek and hacked them to death. Sources believe that he was communicating with God. When we spoke to Brown, we interviewed him on this map. We're here, live at the scene, hoping to get a word with John Brown. John Brown, John Brown, why did you do it? Why did you commit all these horrible crimes? I had to. Why? Because a bunch of the pro-slavery people had come and destroyed the printing press and killed all those people. I had to get revenge. He told me, so I had to get revenge. He told me. Who told you? God told me. He told me I had to get revenge. God told you? He told me to. To your face? Yeah. No, John Brown, John Brown! Well, that was some interview. Back to you at the studio. Thanks, Sarah. Could you also give us some updates about the riots happening in Kansas? Of course, Marissa. The city is in an uproar. The riots seem to be getting worse day by day. The tension between the North and the South is growing rapidly. The number one cause? Slavery. When will this madness end? Back to you at the studio. We have the latest update on Bleeding Kansas. Just a few moments ago, Senator Sumner was struck repeatedly with a cane. The attacker was said to be Senator Andrew Butler's nephew, Preston Brooks. Now, live at the scene, we have field agent Marissa Barbosa. Hey, Sarah. I'm here at the Senate House in Washington, D.C. to give you a few excerpts of Sumner's speech. Uh, any common lust for power did this uncommon tragedy have its origin. It is the rape of a virgin territory compelling it to the hateful embrace of slavery, and it may be clearly traced to a depraved desire for a new slave state hideous offspring of such a crime, in the hope of adding the power of slavery in the national <laughs> government. The senator from South Carolina has read many books of chivalry and believes himself a chivalrous knight with sentiments of horror and courage. Of course, he has chosen a mistress to whom he has made his vows and who, though ugly to others, is always lovely to him. Though polluted in the sight of the world, is chaste. I mean, the harlot slavery. For her or any proposition made to shut her out from the extension of her wantonness. And no extravagance of matter or hardihood of assertion is then too good for this senator. Thanks, Marissa. We have more details about this Senate attack. On this day, May 22nd, in the middle of the Senate House in Washington, D.C., Brooks assaulted Sumner with his own cane, beating him until he was trapped under a desk, but Brooks continued to strike until Sumner was blinded by his own blood and was forced to stagger up the aisle but collapsed, becoming unconscious. Brooks continued to beat Sumner until the cane broke, at which point he left the room. Several other senators attempted to help Sumner but were blocked. We will keep you updated on the latest situation. We believe these incidences will cause escalating tension between the North and the South. Threats of the South seceding from the Union are becoming more realistic as the events occur. We will continue to broadcast the latest updates as we receive them. Thank you so much for watching Channel 9 News. Now, back to the